Hi everyone and welcome to my next video tutorial which is going to be focused on sending and receiving email in Django using a transactional email service provider by utilizing the Django AnyMail library. So as you can see here we can configure the Django email backend to utilize Amazon ECS, Brevo, MailerSend, Mailgun, MailJet, Manjul, Postal and several other transactional email service providers that are out there. Now, a really good use case here is, let's say for example, you have a website and you want to send lots of emails for users that for example, are signing up to your website and you want to send out a welcome email, or if you have users that want to reset their passwords, okay, that would also be another use case where you would be sending quite a lot of emails as well. So this is how you can go about utilizing a particular email backend for your Django application. Now in this video, we are going to, of course, utilize Brevo, which was commonly known as Send in Blue as our transactional email provider. Right, now there are a few pre prerequisites and I also wanna give you an overview as to how we're going to structure everything. So let's get started. Now, the first thing I'd recommend you do is to sign up for a free Brevo account here. So you can head on to the following website. I will be sure as always to go on ahead and include all of the relevant links in the description below for you. So you can sign up for free. And as you go through the process, you're just going to have to enter in some information um, and some details and upon which you will eventually be taken to a page where you can select your plan. So it does have a free plan included, which I'm utilizing here, where you can go ahead and set everything up to have up to 300 emails per day. You can go on higher if you so desire according to your needs, but you can see you can start off on the free tier to set everything up. So that's the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do. You're going to want to go ahead and sign up for free on our Brevo and to go on ahead and set the plan that you wish to have. This will all be included in the relevant setup wizard for a Brevo account. All right, that's the first thing you wanna make sure you do. Next, you want to have a Django project to which you want to base this off. So just any project that you have and that's how you're going to be integrating it. So in my case here, okay, I have my server running. It's going to be a welcome email, which I'm going to use as a test here. So users will sign up, enter in their email, password, and once they've created an account, it's just going to send a welcome email saying, hi there, thank you for registering to the website. And this is going to be our use case, you could say. All right, so make sure you've got that into place. Another thing that I also want to mention here is the email that you set up with uh, Brevo here. So for example, the email I'm using here to sign up is going to be with a Gmail account. So I have a Gmail account here already open here, and this is going to be my testing um, email address that I'm going to utilize. So this will be my test email address, and this is what I used with um, signing up for Brevo. So do keep that in mind as well. So you also want to sign up with an email as well so that you can get everything verified and set up. And make sure that's the same email that you are going to be using as the host or the admin within your Django admin, within your Django application, excuse me. So just something else I also wanted to mention. All right. So if you've got all of that set up and uh, you've set up a Brevo account, you've also signed up with an email to Brevo and you have that also open. What you wanna do then is head on over to your Django project and then we'll get started with all of the necessary steps. Right, so let's begin. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we then want to go ahead and set up the Django AnyMail library. So we can go ahead and copy the following, head on over to our terminal, Okay, so we can stop our server. And you just want to say pip install Django AnyMail. Okay, there we go. So it may take a moment for you to install all of the relevant packages, but this is the first thing that you want to do. So once it's been installed, okay, what we can do is we can head on over to the project description here on Django AnyMail. And we can see all of the providers here. So we're using Brevo. Okay, and we can just go down to the steps here. So I already did step one, we installed any mail from uh, PYPI. And now what we wanna do is we want to add in um, any mail to our list of installed apps. So let's just zoom in here a bit and we can just go ahead and add in the following. So any mail, and then you wanna go to your uh, project settings.py file, like so. Then we can scroll down to installed apps 
And here within our list of installed apps, you can just add any mail here at the bottom of your list of installed apps, just as is. All right, so make sure it's situated as follows. Okay, we've got that right. Now we need to set up our any mail settings here. So as you can see here, the sample here is mailgun API key, mailgun sender domain. And this is just a sample. So you would typically need to add in the any mail option here, then the backend that you want to use, uh, the default from email. So this is where the email is going to be coming from. So that's what you would typically need to integrate. And this is all going to differ according to which provider you're utilizing. So this is a sample for Mailgun. Of course, we have various options here. So for Brevo, I've already gone ahead and looked deeper into the documentation to save you some time here on how you can go ahead and set all of this up easily with um, Brevo. Now, of course, um, if you scroll down here, you can see that the full documentation is available. So you can read deeper if you have a different um, transactional email service provider that you want to utilize. You can also go ahead and read that. It will look very similar to what you see here but it will just be a little bit more unique. Okay, so let me set everything up for you so you can see the simple process. So in your settings.py file, I'd recommend you just scroll to the bottom here and I'll just maximize this. And I'm just going to set up here and uh, email uh, transactional provider. Okay, something simple. And I have everything set here. What I'll be sure to do is I'll add all of this in a pinned comment. So you can literally just copy it easily. You don't need to type all this out or add in the pinned comment of this video, what I have here. So in the settings.py file here, we need to add in the following here. Let me copy that. Right, there we go. And let me move that here. So this is what you need. You need the email backend. So we're going to be using the email backend as send in blue, which is now called Brevo. Then under the email settings here, we want to add in the API key for Brevo. And then we just want to add in the value here where the uh, API key will be. That's just going to allow us to utilize and send transactional emails. And then here, the default from email is the email from which we want to send all those um, transactional emails from. So generally speaking, you would add in a verified custom domain email right here. Now, in our case, just for testing and purposes in the sandbox email, we're going to use a Gmail email address, and that's going to be the email address here that I used to create my Brevo account. So I'm going to use exactly the same one um, for using as a test for the sandbox email. But what you can do is you can change this up to use your own verified custom domain email. Now, there may be a few verification um, settings that you may need to integrate in Brevo to get any domain name that you see fit here in the dashboard. Um, but at the test, you can just use, for example, the Gmail account if you use that to set up your Brevo account. Okay, so here for my sake, I'm just going to put in the Gmail account that I have set. So I had one time x96 at gmail.com. So that is going to be where all the emails are going to be sent from. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm just going to go to the dashboard. So once you've created your Brevo account, this is the dashboard you're going to be seeing. And here on the left-hand side, what you want to do is you want to click on transactional because we want to utilize the message API. So we can click on transactional here. Okay, let's open that up. Okay, there we go. Then the next thing you want to do is scroll down further and you want to click on settings here. So this is going to be under the email heading. So we can click settings. Okay, after which we want to click on configuration. So we want to configure our SMTP for transactional mailings. Okay. Then the next thing that you want to do is you want to say, get your API key. So this is the key that we're going to utilize in order to send these transactional emails. And that is the value that you're going to put here under your actual API key. So let's head there. So I'm going to say, get your API key. Okay, I already have one here set that I have generated, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here and I'm going to delete this API key. And let's generate a new API key. And of course you can give this a name here. So I'm just going to say uh, production emails and generate. Make sure you keep it a secret. You don't share it with anyone else. 
So here is my API key. I'm going to copy that. Then I'm going to navigate here and insert it right here as is. So it's quite a long key. So make sure you don't send your key with anyone else. And then we can head on back and we can just say, okay. And now you can see we have our API key here set and ready to go. Hey, perfect. So we've got that set. Now we can head on to our application and make sure you've set up all of the necessary details in your settings of Python. You've set up the email backend. So that's going to be as follows. So in email backend that you've configured here, the email configuration, which is going to house all of the key value pairs for your API key or any domain name settings that you need to integrate here. So for Brevo or formally send in blue, you're going to put in the key for the API key and then the value associated with it. And then here, the default from email value is going to be where you want your emails to be sent from. So typically this would be like info at your domain name.com or admin at your domain name.com. But like I said, as a chest, we're just going to use a Gmail account, the same one we used to set up our Brevo account to send some sandbox emails. So make sure you've got this in place. Next thing that we want to do is according to what we have here in Django in email, is we want to add in some basic email functionality here in place. Okay, so we're going to use the send mail function that comes from the django.core.mail uh, module. So we want to utilize this. So this is going to depend on how your application is. I'll just give you a rundown of how mine is. So if I go to my web app here and let's have a look here at my forms.py file and my views.py file. Okay, so in my view, my forms.py file here, um, I'm just creating a, a simple form here, which takes in a username, an email, and a password. Password that I want to use and the confirmation. Now, what I can do is I can run my server and show you how this looks so you can see. Let me run the server. Here we go. And let's head on to the application. And if I go to register, you can see I'm outputting the username, email address, and password. Okay. And that's exactly the fields I'm using here. So username, email, and password. And in my views.py file under the register view, um, as you can see here, I'm just setting up my form here. I'm outputting all of those fields. And of course, just saving the fields once all of them have been entered into place. But what I want to do before I redirect is I want to go ahead and add in this um, email functionality right here so that I can send a chest email. All right, so what we're going to want to do is again, I will add this code in the, in the comment. So we want to first of all import the send mail function. So in your views.py file right at the top here, you can add the following in right here in your views.py so that we can send a mail. Okay, and here before the redirect, I'll suggest what you can do is you can add in this send mail function here. And I've added in some bits here just to make it simpler. So you just want to make sure you indent this, of course, like follows. So it's going to take in four parameters. So first, it's going to be the subject of your email. So here I'm just going to set this to welcome. Then it's going to be the actual message itself. So I'm going to say here, this is a test message. I can take this out and I can say, um, uh, congrats on uh, joining uh, our team. <laughs> so something simple, so congrats on joining our team. And then here is we're going to put in your domain name email. So in this case, Okay, we're going to mirror it to what the value is here from the default from email value. So here it's going to be one time x 96 gmail.com. So this is where all the emails are going to be coming from. So we'll add that in like that. And then here is the recipient email. So this is going to be the email of anybody else. So to make sure I have consistency, I'm just making sure it's Gmail to Gmail for the time being. So this email here, okay, is going to be based on the value of what's put in the email field, which I can see right here. So I'm going to take in that value um, for whatever it is, and I'm going to send it to that particular recipient. So to do that, I'm just saying form.cleaned underscore data and email. So that's just going to allow me to take whichever value is entered in the email field here and send it to that 
that user with the following email address here, which is linked to Brevo, so I can send lots of transactional emails. Okay, so make sure you add in this function and make sure that you've nested it, it, nested it nicely as follows here. So subject, message, the admin email or where the email is coming from and the email where you're sending it to. So this shouldn't be a specific email, this should be whatever the user enters in. So again, like I said, I will add all of this in the pinned comment here that you see. So it's going to make it a lot easier for you to set all of this up. Now, all of this is going to work smoothly according to the email backend we send set up, which is send in blue, according to any mail. Okay, so to make this all run smoothly, I have my admin sort of email here set up here in place and also an incognito. So an incognito window also have a sample Gmail um, open here, which is going to be the test email, which I'm going to be expecting an email to be sent um, to. Okay, so this is the email which I'm going to add in my form. So let's go back here and let's set this up. So I have my server running, all right. So let's continue, let's actually test the process. So I'll enter in the username and the email to which I want it to be sent to. So it'll also be a Gmail account just for testing and add in a password. Okay, and let's create our account. Okay, account was created. So now if I were to head on over to the email to which this email was sent from, I should have an email there sitting and there we go we can see the email where it's from we can see the subject welcome and congrats on joining our team as the message so that is essentially how you can go on ahead and ensure that you are effectively able to send transactional emails from a transactional email service provider by utilizing the django and email library right guys so that's it for this video tutorial and just one more thing that I do want to mention. So when it comes to the Django from email here, this is where the email will be from. So usually this will be a verified custom domain name email, like I mentioned before. Now I have just tested this with two Gmail accounts. So the one um, being the one I signed up was Brevo4. And of course the other one being also a Gmail one, just to make sure that there's consistency. Now, if you test this with other emails, so actual emails from other, um, from your domain, for example, there may be a few extra configurations that you're going to want to set into place here. So I do recommend also having a look here at the full documentation for looking into detail and also to look at Brevo as well in terms of reading their documentation fully. If there's something you're going to have to verify on Brevo side as well to ensure that the emails that you're sending from your custom domain name is in fact verified. So there may be an additional step or process to put into place. Just something I want to mention, just as something extra so that you're aware of how you can send this with any other email and to make it more, how can I say, um, more, um, you know, available to the email that you're utilizing without any restrictions or anything of the sort. So just one last thing I wanted to mention. But yes, um, that is it for this video tutorial, everyone. Um, as always, thank you for the support and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.